Uh, so first I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It was uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been here for almost two months and unfortunately my time is almost over. So I will talk about uh, a joint project or work with uh, Ivan Martel and Claudio Munoz. In fact, uh, the paper is already on archive. And uh, well, let me uh, first let me tell you what's the problem. What the problem is. So the problem is a, it's a very simple one-dimensional uh, problem, which, which is known in, let's say, this culture or this context as a FIFOR model. And um, before, uh, maybe before I continue with this model, let me make a, a little digression ab about uh, uh, general PDEs of. Uh, which share the simil similar properties or as far as the nonlinear structure. So, uh, um, uh, so people consider uh, two equations. So there's an elliptic equation or parabolic equation. Um, it can be considered in high in uh, bounded domains or in, in the whole space. So let's think of these problems in the whole space. So um, often this, uh, either of this equation is referred to as the allen kahn equation. Or by stable. Okay, so it's very easy to see looking at the nonlinearity, where is it called by stable. Okay. Uh, so it has three zeros. Um, I don't know how it goes. Uh, this way it goes like this. Okay, it has three zeros, and there, are, in fact, this is a very bad picture. Uh, the point is that this area is equal to this area, and also that the oh, this is the other way around. I I I, rever I inverted it, but uh, well, anyway, it's clear that these extreme zeros are are supposed to be stable. Okay, so these kind of equations are studied a lot, and there is a, a lot of lit literature about them. Uh, and they are nice in a, in a sense that they have certain um, connection with geometry. So the parabolic equation is is very related to what is called the mean curvature flow, and the elliptic equation is related to the minimal surface theory. And they've been studied. From the 70s, uh, uh, I think the Georgi was the one who introduced them to this sort of mathematical PD, uh, nonlinear elliptic PD and parabolic PD community. Okay, so so I, I like to see this uh, phi four model as a, as a part of a bigger family, and there is certain I think affinity between uh, between those theories on certain level. Okay, so it is. Um, Convenient sometimes, I use it often to write the, the model as a system and then I will abuse the notation. So for me, phi sometimes is a, is a scalar and sometimes a vector. Okay, and this is all real and everything. Okay, and so it's uh, obvious that uh, th th this, uh, this equation has two conserved quantities that are very important. It is the energy and the momentum and they both play a role in, in what I will say in, in deep way. And as, uh, as for the energy, I just put here W, okay, uh, which is a, a quartic polynomial. And so this is where the name phi 4 model comes from, because it's a fo fourth order equation. And um, in fact, I don't come from this culture, so I learned about this problem from a, from a pa paper written by Witten, okay, and in which he mentions, among other models, this model and argues that, uh, that in fact it's, there is a deep reason why this, uh, this potential W should be of this form. That this is a, is a fourth order uh, uh, equation, a uh, fourth order polynomial and not something else. Okay? There, is a phy there are deep physic physical reasons for, for this. Okay? And another context in which this model appears a lot is if you open a, a book on, on quantum field theory, then typically first chapter is devoted to the phi four model and sine Gordon equation. Okay. So the, the basic object people study and uh, and this is in some sense is common also for the Allen-Kahn equation is the kink. In fact, in the five 
in the in the quantum field theory also the, everyone studies at the beginning the kink so it's something very simple in this case it's, it's an explicit solution this is just hyperbolic tangent and it's a, a solution to the ODE and of course say uh, well it's not unique if unless I say that it should be increasing and odd for instance otherwise it's not because I can translate it or there is a symmetry the whole problem is symmetric is odd symmetric okay so <coughs> if I look at the at the wave equation then the king generates a two-dimensional invariant manifold or, or a piece of an invariant manifold at least uh, just by Lorentz transformation so if I have a king I can change it okay and, and for ev every y y is a constant and c is the speed between minus one and one I have a solution to, to the problem okay and so basic question is okay what is what kind of uh, behavior you expect around this type of solutions of the flow okay what will happen uh, so first uh, thing to, to that I will d describe a little bit is orbital stability <coughs> so just to make uh, compact somehow the notation not to avoid maybe too many letters uh, what I will I will denote the kink okay uh, suitably translated and rescaled okay and its derivative so you can think of H and H prime as uh, as initial data associated to this solution simply initial uh, position and velocity okay and so then I can look at, uh, at, the, per at the perturbation of this uh, initial data and then it's not so difficult to see that, that in fact I can without loss of generality I can consider perturbations in, in such a way that the speed c corresponds to the initial momentum and the perturbation v0 okay v0 is a vector so its first component is L2 orthogonal to H prime. Okay? And this is very easy to, to do. Because if I start with any initial data near X, okay, I can first choose, choose C and then I can adjust Y in order to satisfy the orthogonality condition. So it's just a matter of, of a choice. Well, it's a convenient choice. So uh, okay, so I, I maybe I'm a little bit pretentious beca because I attributed this theorem to myself and Ivan and Claudio uh, but in fact we have not found uh, we, we, we have not found this theorem before and this is simply orbital stability of the king uh, but maybe it's a part of, of, a of the folklore and this I don't know so, so if you take a solution with the initial data as I described which is additionally small in the energy space then uh, uh, the global solution, okay, and I should say that global solutions for this problem exist and it's, uh, it's not very difficult to, to show that, uh, okay, that, that, that's, that's known. And the global solution will be such that its, uh, its perturbation V it will be orthogonal always to H prime and the momentum is, is fixed as it should be and then moreover it is uh, small in the, in the energy space. So this is simply the orbital stability of, of the kink, okay. So I will not talk about the proof, the proof is uh, rather easy, it just uses the conservation of energy and momentum and the spectral property of, of the kink. Um, so in fact <coughs> there was a previous, uh, I, should, I, should, I should say that there was a previous proof of orbital stability by Henry, Dan Henry, Perez and Wreszynski in maybe 83. Uh, and they proved that the kink is orbitally stable, also in the energy space, assuming that c is equal to zero. So that proof is uh, maybe a little bit more general because it, uh, they, they prove it for other nonlinearities as well. But on the other hand, the fact that c is equal to zero simplifies a little bit the argument. In fact, the argument is almost trivial with that. Okay. Now, I mentioned the parabolic problem. So the parabolic problem is... Um, is very uh, is, is very well understood, um, and uh, in some sense it's well it's not trivial, but it's uh, it's well understood. So if you take a, a, the parabolic version and you consider a kink, then kink is is uh, is asymptotically exponentially asymptotically stable, uh, and in fact, okay, if you think of uh, let's say initial data that change sign sign once then this initial data will evolve to a kink and then okay, move in, in some way. 
and uh, well, this, these things are known uh, from maybe the 90s already, <coughs> 80s and 90s. Okay. Then, the, as I mentioned, also a, a classical example of an integrable system that is a, well, phi four model is not integrable, by the way, which is uh, somehow considered together with the five mo five four model is the sign Gordon equation. So this is the equation. Uh, so some of you may not like the sign, but in fact it doesn't matter the sign here. And the, and this uh, equation has um, uh, uh, solutions that are interesting. Se several solutions that are interesting. In particular, it has a king that is explicit as a solution that's called the breeder and something that's called wobbling king. So let me let me show you how this. So a breeder, in fact, is not a, a single solution. It's a, it's, a, it's a family, okay? It's a one-parameter family, and the same with the wobbling king. It's a one-parameter family. So uh, a, a wobbling king, okay, so here what I have are, um, uh, is, is the, the red curve is the king of sine Gordon, and then I have snapshots of a wobbling king with certain choice of parameters, okay? These other curves are the snapshots and go over the period. Uh, and notice that, first of all, well, the way I choose the sine Gordon is such that the king uh, uh, changes between 0 and 2 pi, okay? And it is, if you take pi as, a, as an axis, then pi minus the king will be odd, <laughs> okay? And the same with the wobbling king, pi minus the wobbling, uh, wobbling king will be odd. Uh, and also notice that the asymptot asymptotically, in fact, the, the wobbling king and the sine Gordon and the king for sine Gordon are indistinguishable. Is the, the, the asymptotics is the same even at exponential rate. Okay, and here I have a wobbling um, a breather. So these are snapshots of a breather. Breather oscillates around zero. But for sine Gordon, oscillates around zero. So zero happens to be the sort of stable. Uh, uh, state of sine Gordon, okay? A breather oscillates here and here, okay? So somehow uh, you can think of a wobbling kink as a, as a combination, it's not quite superposition, you cannot say that, but it's a kind of combination of, uh, of, uh, of a kink and a breather, and, uh, and of course a wobbling kink says that kink is not asymptotically stable for sine Gordon, and then uh, uh, somehow people believe that the breather causes it in some way. So if you have a, a nonlinear Klein-Gordon equation with, in which you have a breather, then maybe a kink, if, if there is a kink in this equation, should not be stable. So uh, breathers by themselves are, I think, are very, very delicate uh, objects, they're very uh, non-generic. And so uh, Denzler proved that they do not persist after uh, uh, under small generic perturbations of sine Gordon. In fact, it's a, 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 they are kind of co-dimension one perturbations. So there is only one type of perturbations, and then he claims also that even for those perturbations, breather doesn't persist. And there is an. Uh, it's not very diff very easy, in fact, to exclude possibility of existence of breeders in general. But there is a result that I found. Uh, maybe it's from the 80s as well. Uh, of uh, Villermo, uh, who shows the certain class or class or, or, show, or gives a condition for nonlinearity so that breeders do not exist. Okay, and, and with uh, I can ask a question? yes, just because I think it's obvious to you that uh, a wobbly kink and a breather are time periodic. Oh, I didn't say that, but but, uh, but uh, let me go back. Are. Yes, they are absolutely time periodic because of the sign. A wobbly kink too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. So that's a count of the number of degrees of freedom in which they can move. E absolutely. Which is one. Absolutely. So these are, these are periodic. Yes, I didn't say that. Sorry. Uh, this, uh, yeah, maybe this is obvious to me, but uh, indeed, these are, these are time periodic solutions. Okay, so they, that's why they, okay. Yes, tell me. What, what is the definition of a breather? Ah, okay. The, this I don't know. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's one of these things that when you see it, you know it, it, uh, that it, this is it. So what does but your theorem mean? Okay, uh, yes, well again, this is, this is it. Uh, so what I mean by this is uh, solutions that are periodic near zero. 
small solutions periodic in, in the energy space, okay? Because you see, there's not enough space here. I, if I want to make this transparency, so I had to use a kind of shortcut, okay? Uh, but it's a very simple, in fact, it is, this follows from uh, our method that I will explain later on for uh, the asymptotic stability result. It's, it's a rather simple, I would say, even observation. Uh, I for a very special kind of Klein-Gordon equations that, is, uh, uh, that preserve uh, odd space, so that nonlinearity must be odd, uh, you don't have small odd breeders. So this means if you start in the energy space, uh, there, is no, uh, there are no solutions that are small in the energy space and, and time periodic. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, now, by the way, for the sine Gordon, uh, what, uh, breather is, is, is not odd, it's even. So, of course, this is not a contradiction. Okay, so somehow odd breathers are, are objects that cannot exist. Okay, so the finding wobbling kinks for the 5 4 model, in fact, it was. Uh, People, I think, worked on it somehow in the 80s and tried to find sort of solutions that would look like wobbling kings and, and breeders. Uh, and there is, uh, there is uh, some work of Seeger and, and Kruskal and Seeger. In, in particular, Kruskal and Seeger showed, uh, sort of showed, that there are no uh, small breeders for, uh, for, fi for the Phi 4 model uh, by but th by them, by, okay, for them, small breeder means a breeder that oscillates around one or minus one. Okay, so now let me talk a little bit about the, um, five, what is known about the five four model. So I gathered some results among many, uh, uh, but, but which I found relevant, maybe and, and interesting, because they look at the at the problem from various uh, angles. So first, uh, there, is a, there is a couple of papers, or, or maybe more, maybe not a couple, maybe two or th three or four papers, of Komen and Kopyleva, and they analyzed uh, nonlinear Klein-Gordon equations that look like sign, like 5-4 model, but they are not 5-4 model. I mean, they, they consider perturbed version of this model, perturbed nonlinearity, that do not in include, in fact, the, the perturbations are, in some sense, not small because they severely perturb nonlinearity, uh, okay? Uh, but, they, but then they were able to show <coughs> stability of the king in the, in the odd space, so they consider only odd perturbations, which is the context of our work as well. Now, in higher dimension, okay, there is a work of Kukania from maybe 2010, and he considered a planar front, so what you do is you take the king and you consider it in, you, you, you lift it to three dimensions, okay, you consider it in, in three dimensions in space, and then you look at the asymptotic stability of, of this object, and he showed this asymptotic stability. Um, and, and it is actually important that the dimension of the space is three, and this, this simplifies a lot, because then you can use dispersion, okay, uh, in, in complementary dimensions, let's say. Uh, so, in particular case, 2 and 1 are, are more difficult, I think, from this point of view. And also I wanted to mention the work of, of Gerard, that I kind of outline a little bit the, the result, uh, which is not so easy maybe to explain, but it is a kind of local existence result, okay, in higher dimensions. It's a construction, as I better say, it's a, it's a construction lo of local solutions, local in time that look like a kink around, okay, centered around certain um, uh, minimal surface, okay, in Lorentz space. Okay, so now let me talk about, about our results, so just to, just to introduce a little bit. Uh, uh, so I will talk about odd uh, kink perturbed only by odd perturbations. This is, this is very important. Uh, and uh, why it is important? Because you know that, okay, we, we, I said that the kink, you can, you can boost it, okay, you can let it move, but if you only consider odd perturbations, there is no motion, so C is zero. So this, this is this way you take out one degree of freedom, okay, the one mod modulation, and this simplifies, uh, 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 I think, analysis in, uh, in a certain way. Okay, so you look at the odd perturbations and, and immediately from nonlinear problem you pass 
uh, the, of, the of the previous form, you pass to a, to a different kind of equation, that is, you, you, you take a linearized part and a nonlinear part, and so now the problem is not sine Gordon equation, uh, it's not Klein Gordon equation because the they has a well, it has a potential, so it's not, it's different, okay? And then the problem is reduced to asymptotic stability of zero in the odd space. So this is the problem I will I will study. And this is something important that I will use a lot, which is the form of the linearized operator. Okay, this linearized operator is, is classical, and and you can say uh, a lot, if not all, you know about its spectrum. And so the result is uh, is the following. So if you take uh, uh, perturbations in the odd space, energy space, which are sufficiently small, okay, then the global solution uh, with this initial data goes to zero in local in local energy space, okay? So the norm here is, uh, here is in the whole space, but here it's on, on a bounded interval, okay? So there is, of course, okay, we don't give any rate, and, uh, and, but on the other hand, in some sense, if you, are restrict your, if you restrict yourself to the energy space, in some sense, this is an optimal result, in, uh, because, uh, I mean, in a sense that you can only take local norm, Okay, because if uh, well, if you were able to show that uh, you converge to zero in the whole in the full norm, then in fact you didn't show anything. Okay. Uh. So in order to explain a little bit the result and how we prove it, I have to talk ab about the spectrum of the linearized operator. So this is, uh, as I said, it's explicit. You have uh, zero is the obvious eigenvalue that corresponds to translations. And there is another eigenvalue, which is very important for uh, its eigenfunction, is very important for what I will talk about, because it happens to be odd. And then you have a, a continuous spectrum, and two is a resonance, but the resonant uh, eigenval eigenfunction is even, so it doesn't play a role in this. Okay? So as I said, you have the, the, the translations, and then you have um, a first mode, non-zero mode, which is odd. Okay? And this is, uh, this is important. So, <coughs> in order to understand uh, the dynamics, what is convenient to do is to decompose the solution, okay, into uh, a, a discrete mode, the odd mode that I described, okay, multiplied by some function of t, and the rest, okay, so we have radiation, and this part that is called internal oscillations. So notice that this uh, eigenfunction is, lo is localized, okay? It's localized around the king. That's why uh, uh, people call, it, call this, this mode internal oscillations. Okay, so there is the theorem is, uh, 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 is the following, is that, uh, under the assumptions of the previous theorem, the following, you have the following estimate. So you, this uh, z1, z2 to power 4 integrated in time, and uh, again, it's a kind of local energy or weighted energy norm of the radiation, radiation part integrated in time. It's bounded by the initial data. Okay? So this even you can see as a kind of weak form of asymptotic stability. In fact, the, the previous result follows from this okay? by an additional arg argument, which is, I think, not very difficult. Uh, well, this, is, this is basically the, the, the important result. Okay, so it, this information that is given in this theorem, it seems, uh, it seems weak, but uh, as I said, in the energy space, it's rather difficult, I think, to, to get uh, something better. Okay? One would have to go to another, con another context, functionality context. Okay? And the, ba the basic approach to prove uh, this theorem and, and, the ne and the previous one, the stronger result, is based on, on virial estimates basically, and this, is, uh, this was motivated by the work of uh, Martin Merle for KDV and Merle and Raphael. I mention especially these two works because I think it was, you'll see at the end that they are very relevant somehow. Okay? But there is a difference, and the difference is uh, to take into account internal oscillations. So this is, uh, this is a new element. Okay? And then, okay, I, I should say that General results for this type of uh, for this type of uh, problem, okay, say that basically maybe you can improve 
Okay, maybe you can improve this integrability, but not too much. I think uh, you, it's rather <coughs> difficult to prove that um, you have L2 norm in time bounded. Okay, so okay, so in order to to say about uh, what is because okay, I want to explain there is the the proof, but I also want to explain what is going on, what is the mechanism. Okay, and so in order to do this, I think it is fair to. Uh, to talk about the paper of Sofer and Weinstein, which somehow started this uh, business, uh, let's say, in, in certain way. It's a paper from 99. And what they did is they considered uh, this type of uh, nonlinear Klein-Gordon equation with cubic nonlinearity with a potential okay, in, in three-dimensional space. So the potential, of course, is introduced just to avoid um, translations, okay? so to fix the, the, the object they were interested in. Uh, in, in, in space, and what they were interested in is the si similar th question, the sta asymptotic stability of zero. So remember that I reduced already my problem to asymptotic stability of zero, so it's very similar, okay? And they make certain assumptions of the, of the linear, uh, linearized operator, so the assumption is that it has one discrete eigenvalue, okay, and the, then there's a continuous spectrum without resonance, so you see it's the same, abstractly, also, they make another assumption, which is called the Fermi-Golden rule. So, Fermi-Golden rule, I think, was previous. Well, it, it comes from uh, spectral theory, okay? And, uh, and I don't really understand why it's called Fermi-Golden rule, because in, in the spectral, if you open a book of, uh, of Reed and Simon and you look what this Fermi-Golden rule, it's something completely different. But may, these people, okay, they had reasons to, to call it like this, so I follow, I follow this. And um, I, I will not write it, okay, I just say that the Fermi-Golden rule implies in particular that 3 times omega, okay, is bigger than m. So you have m here and you have omega and there is algebraic relation between them. And in fact, it seems stupid, but this is, uh, this is very important, this algebraic relation. So what is the result of Sofer and Weinstein? Okay, something, uh, something like this. They also de okay, decompose the solution into internal oscillations and the radiation in a similar way. And then they show that the internal oscillations decay, okay, in al infinity in fact, in time, with the rate. And the uh, radiation also decays in L L8, but they give a rate. So, so what is the, I think that when, when you under, understand the strategy of their proof, you also understand what is going on. So let, let me explain the strategy of, the, of their proof. So the, the strategy of their proof, I think it's best to, to get rid of many nonlinear terms and just stick to the core of the problem. And the core of the problem is the following. You have a coupled equation, so for the radiation and for the internal oscillation. So this is a nonlinear PDE, okay? Uh, and uh, and this is simply an ODE, is that, okay? It's it's um, it's just nonlinear oscillator, and so their strategy is is, uh, is something like this: you first solve given a, you solve this equation for eta, you plug it in to the to the second equation, then you have just a nonlinear oscillator, and you look for nonlinear oh, for normal form of this uh, nonlinear oscillator, and then you find the decay of a, and then you and then the decay of eta follows from that. And so, uh, by the way, okay, you see that you have a cubed here, okay, and this a cubed is very important. It, this uh, 3 omega bigger than m has to do with this cube, okay? If it was 4, then you would need 4 omega bigger than, than m and so on. Okay, and it's important in this strategy, I think, that the space is three-dimensional, three so that you can use the Hamel formula and dispersive estimates and close estimates. Okay, so in, in one dimension, uh, this strategy is not, I think, is not so easy to, to follow, especially if you, if you work in the energy space. So now let me explain what is the strategy that we, that we propose. Okay, so first, okay, so let me recall the problem. So this is the problem, okay, with the, this kind of linear operator. And, uh, well, I decompose, as I said, okay, according to, this, to the spectrum of, the, of this operator. So this is the step I already described. And then you project, okay, this problem into Y1 and it's to com complement. 
So if you do that, okay, you get two, pro two equations. Uh, first, you have the finite dimensional, okay, no, no linear oscillator, and then you have the infinite dimensional part. So again, what I do is I uh, uh, systematically uh, omit certain terms that are of higher order. So you have to believe me that they are really they can be controlled. And what I leave is the is the core of the of the problem. Okay, so the core of the problem is to understand how these two equations are coupled quadratically because they are coupled quadratically. Okay. And, and so, uh, somehow they think, okay, well, maybe I, I, I need to decouple them some, in some way. But this is impossible. This is, this is the, I think this is where the problem is. That you cannot decouple them. You have, to keep, you have to work with them, or you have to understand the way they are coupled. Okay? And the function f here, by the way, is explicit. It's a nice uh, decaying function. Okay? Um, and this function plays a role later on. Okay? In, when so, so the idea, basically, is to somehow reduce in a way, okay, so one would like to find normal form perhaps, but this is not so easy. Turns out, um, I think it's, it's quite complicated, but you can find something like a normal form. That is, uh, so let me, let me explain this. So, okay, so what is a normal form? Because you might, so for, for me, normal form is a form of the problem in which you can understand how the modulus uh, evolves. Also, you, you kind of don't have the face. So this is what I, uh, so, so to do that, okay, is change variables. So you introduce new variable alpha, which is simply, okay, this is the real part of z squared. If you look at z as a, as a complex number, and beta is the imaginary part, okay? And you make a change of variables, and this change of variables uh, cleans a little bit the problem in such a way that you can write uh, the infinite dimensional problem just in terms of a new function v that is basically like u but then in alpha okay which is the square and then you can write also the problem for alpha and beta okay the, the choice of this of this change of variables makes it possible and then you, s you see that the problem is is not nonlinear anymore that is i have certain nonlinear terms that i can control and then i have a linear problem here and a linear problem here. So it's now uh, it's uh, at this moment that you can use virial identities. Okay, and so to use virial identities, uh, so it is the objective of, of virial identities. The objective is to show that this object, okay, this this integral in time is bounded, and uh, and it is important, okay, when it, when when, do, when we do all this analysis, it's important to have orbital stability before, okay? Because it allows, in, in fact, to control a lot of nonlinear terms. Okay? So the virial identity is, uh, well, the first part is something that everyone knows, I think. The second part is uh, maybe not so obvious, but uh, well, it's kind of natural, okay? Because you exactly mix the way you, you, you would like to do, alpha and v2. And then, okay, in both of these identities, the point is that you have unknown functions, psi and the g, okay? And, the, and you have to choose them in such a way. So for the choice of psi, the, there is a natural choice. Because you want psi to look like x. So you can choose a function that uh, approximates x in some sense, because if you choose x, n th this object may be not, not, no, not integrable, okay? Uh, but, um, uh, but for G, there is no obvious choice, okay? And this is, this is something you have to work out. But anyway, in, in, if you plug this in, okay, well, if you differentiate, sorry, if you differentiate this, oh, by the way, notice that in any case, these two objects, uh, these two functionals are bounded, okay? Because of the orbital stability. They're small in some sense. Um, so now you differentiate them, and then you, when you differentiate, you get a bilinear form on, on V1, and you get some mixed terms, okay, that involve alpha and v1, and some uh, explicit function h and f, which I defined before, which is explicit, and this function g that is not explicit. And so the point is now to choose uh, psi and g and use the oddness in such a way that this bilinear form is bound, well, is coercive. This is the, this is the, this is the whole thing. And in order to, it turns out, well, that in order to choose the function g is where we use the Fermi golden rule. So in order to, it's not so maybe, uh, I, I don't want to explain it in detail, it's kind of involved 
calculation. But at some point you have to, you see that in order to choose G, you have to solve a, an equation. And this equation can be solved in a way you want to do it only if you have Fermi golden rule, okay? So it's hidden somehow, but it appears. And then, okay, once, no, okay, once you have this, this is not enough because you're still missing V2 and, and beta, but this is, this is easy. Uh, you just uh, compute, once you have alpha and beta, you, you find two other virial identities and you, you compute and uh, the, well, integrate and so on and, and you get it. So this, uh, this, is not so, this is not so difficult. So now I will, uh, let me uh, a li talk a little bit about the coercivity of this, uh, of this bilinear form, okay? So, so as I said, in order to choose Psi, well, you have to choose some sort of uh, approximation of X, okay? Uh, uh, and then uh, it's natural, well, it's many choices, but we, have, we choose uh, Psi to be this function. So it's related to the king, okay? Um, and, uh, well, I think this choice is, is quite good in some sense. It works very well, and I'll, I'll explain why. So, okay, so you have this bilinear form. Uh, notice that if you like, okay, the, 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 this, this form had to change a little bit because of this psi prime factor here. So you have to change variables. So the change is very natural. You just uh, introduce, you take square root. What you would like is square root of v1 instead of uh, square root of psi prime v1, okay? So you have to change variables. Okay, with this zeta is the square root of psi 1, which is the sec secant hyperbolic. When you change variables, well, you magically get a new functional. And this functional is, is nice, it has a potential. This potential is explicit, you can compute what it is. And then, but it's a basic fact that we prove is that under the uh, oddness assumption and orthogonality, uh, this bilinear form is coercive, okay? And so now let me, well, I, I think I finished earlier, so let me just uh, uh, explain a little bit how, uh, how, we, how we work out the coercivity. So in fact, this bilinear form is, um, you see, this potential is quite complicated. So it, it consists of two parts, one part that I hit in B2, okay? B2 is not so, maybe, it's kind of involved, but uh, it's not so important, it's not so difficult, but it's kind of messy. But B1 is very nice, okay? B1 is a, is a bilinear form that is associated, oh, there is a W missing here, sorry, W squared. The B1 is a bilinear form associated to a classical operator, okay? And then, well, in fact, you, you can find, you open a book of, uh, well, devoted to this, I don't know, Teach Marsh or some classical book, and you find this kind of operator. And, uh, and you find its spectrum computed, and, and you can see that, uh, that this bilinear form is non-negative. And in fact, this is the operator, you just rescale it. And this is where I, I at, the, at some point, I mentioned that we used the uh, approach of, uh, of Merle and, Ma and Martel, and Merle and, and Raphael. And so not, it's not only that we use the approach, because this is, uh, okay, you use the approach, but also at the end, it's, everything hinges on, on the same kind of classical uh, Schrodinger operator. So I think there is a very interesting uh, kind of connection and structure that is behind uh, this, um, that maybe it's um, still to be understood. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Well, could you uh, could you compare with the sign Gordon case? What's what allows the breeder to exist? Or oh, what allows breeder to exist? I don't know. I think it's because structure here is similar. Uh, yes, spectral structure is um, no, no. It's not similar. It's the, okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes, and no. There is no internal mode. So for sign Gordon, you have zero and then continuous spectrum. So it's different. And the edge of the continuous spectrum is a resonance, but it's odd. Okay, so it's, it's quite different. Yes. So if you, re if you were to remove the oddness assumption of the initial yes. data, 
So of course you you get the zero, which is a symmetry mode of the Lorentz transform yes. fine. So this can be more or less handled. But yes. you would also get the resonance at the yes. edge of the spectrum, and this is pro supposedly more serious. Or yes, I think it's it's uh, way more serious. Yes, I don't think it's just technicality or something like this. I think it's a, it's a serious difficulty. So you can understand why. Okay, just uh, write. And the, the, well, write just the, the, the problem, okay, and, uh, and and you have a resonance which is, looks like a constant. Well, project formally on this, you see that things are uh, oscillating, okay, in certain, uh, and then they are as close as you want to the energy space. So it's very difficult. I think it's a compl it's complicated. Any more questions? <coughs> yes. The relation between the um the, the basic estimate, I think it goes to, to group 32, and um, positive commutative <coughs> estimates. It sometimes somehow looks like those who, who choose functions, sometimes something that looks like a cutoff x, yes. in, in order to make a commutator positive. Okay, uh, it's a little bit beyond my expertise to answer this question, but... Also call it virial estimate. It's a virial estimate, yes. But it, okay, it has to do with the, with the momentum in some sense. It's, it's just this. And if you look at, you know, if you formally do it with X, well, it just works nicely. More questions? If not, let's thank Michael again. Okay, thank you.